What does this new cabinet look like? Because there's a, a couple of controversial appointments in there. Indeed, uh, we have a couple of interesting choices among the new faces Emmanuel Macron has brought to join this new cabinet. Of course, as you mentioned, there are many familiar faces. He hasn't changed everyone. The big ministries continue to be led by the same people. The economy, defence, foreign affairs have remained unchanged. But we have a new justice minister, who is uh, perhaps France's most popular but also most divisive lawyer. His name is Éric dupont moretti He defended a mayor last year in a very high-profile case of fraud. And he's got some pretty derogatory terms for judges here in France. And, of course, we have a new interior minister who is currently under investigation for rape. What does this new cabinet show about Macron's priorities, the sort of second half of the term? Because his eyes are going to be on, you know, 2022 re-election. This reflects a little bit of a shift to the right, doesn't it? It, it absolutely does. Uh, and it also says that Emmanuel Macron is under a lot of pressure. He's been talking about reinventing himself. His popularity ratings have dropped significantly. He has lost a lot of support. He has been roundly criticized for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, a lot of people here in France know that in terms of the economy, for example, the worst is still to come. So some experts have been talking about an autumn of unrest brewing in and that, of course, worries Emmanuel Macron because, as you mentioned, in two years' time, we'll have presidential elections. So uh, while he says that he wants to reinvent himself uh, and renew his government, many people here in France uh, hear him saying that he wants to renew his hopes of being re-elected. He is taking a shift to the right bringing a lot of people close to his uh, to a predecessor very well known here in France to be one of his um, most important perhaps advisors Nicolas Sarkozy uh, he seems to be choosing a path that is very similar to one that Nicolas Sarkozy would actually choose today perhaps trying to appeal to voters conservative voters who would then um, switch to Emmanuel Macron in the hopes, of course, that he uh, reaches that point where he is once again in the second uh, round with Marine Le Pen, the leader of the far right, uh, hoping that the French will once again opt out of this extreme choice and choose Emmanuel Macron for a second term.